so computer fundamentals there's a chapter 2 here we need to know the introduction we'll be getting introduced to what exactly is a computer what are the characteristics of computers what are the functional units of computers what are input devices what are output devices what are primary and secondary memories and uh, so on so com coming to introduction we all know computer is uh, we've felt it's uh, for a, in every nook and corner of our everyday lives their presence can be felt at almost every working place via schools, colleges, homes, industries, offices, hospitals, banks, airways, railways, research organizations and so on. Computers large and small are used nowadays by all kinds of people for a variety of purposes. Now, what exactly is a digital computer? It is a digital device which processes digital data. Thus, computer can be defined as a multi-purpose programmable machine built by logic circuits which accepts binary data as input, processes the data according to the binary instructions read from its memory and provides result in the form of binary or analog as its output. So it, it could also be uh, defined as basically an electronic device which can transmit, store and manipulate information that is the data. Several different types of data can be processed by a computer like numeric data, character data, graphics data, sound data and so on. So numeric data, what exactly is this? It collects all the uh, data in numeric form that is a number like Aadhaar number, mobile number, uh, you know anything in digits. And uh, what about uh, graphics data? It's something similar to uh, charts, drawings, photographs, bar graphs, etc. And um, character data will denote something like name, address, etc. And sound data, it captures the music, the speech pattern, etc. So the most common data types are numeric data and character data. And scientific and technical applications are primarily with numeric data while business applications require um, character data and uh, sometimes with both numeric and character data. So digital computer operates uh, essentially by counting all quantities are expressed as discrete digits or numbers and we all know binary digits 0 and 1. Coming to characteristics of computers. So it's we all know computer is automatic. It, it works at high speed, it's, it gives accurate results and it's versatile, it's diligent and it's large and it has a perfect memory, it's, I mean it has a large and perfect memory but it is having no IQ of its own and uh, no feelings unlike human beings. So let us study in detail what exactly is the characteristic feature of a computer. Computers, as we said, are automatic machines in the sense that once started on a job, they carry on until the job is finished, normally without any user's help. Uh, but computers cannot start themselves. They have to be instructed with the instructions specified way of the job completion. Speed, yes. Computers can work at enormously high speeds. They are capable of taking logical decisions, performing arithmetic and non-arithmetic operations on alphabets and copying at unbelievable speed. So... Uh, Accuracy. Yes, computers produce highly accurate and reliable results. In majority of the cases, the accuracy is close to 100%. Um, versatility. Computer is capable of performing a wide variety of functions. It can accept data and produce results. It can perform the fundamental arithmetic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. It can perform logical operations. It can transfer data internally, that is data can flow from one part to the other in the machine. Diligence means it's capable of performing the same task over and over again with the same degree of accuracy and reliability as the first uh, uh, because it, unlike human beings, a computer is free from monotony, tiredness, lack of concentration, etc. And hence can work for hours together without creating any errors. And uh, computers have large and perfect memory. As a human being, our ability to acquire and retain knowledge is limited. But this is not the case with computers. A computer can store and recall any amount of information because of its secondary storage capability with perfect accuracy. Even after several years, the information recalled will be as accurate as on the day when it was fed into the computer. A computer loses information only when it is asked to do so. No IQ. 
a computer is not intelligent on its own it cannot think on its own it can only perform tasks that a human being can the difference is that it performs these tasks with unthinkable speed and accuracy it cannot take decisions on its own only the user can determine what tasks the computer will perform so as we said it does not have any feelings yes computers being machines have no feelings while human beings have feelings and they can take decisions but the computers can take decisions on the instructions provided to them in the form of programs written by the user so with this Peter, we have uh, and, uh, we have input devices which through which we can feed the data into the computer so these input devices are called input units they are, to name few input devices we have keyboard we have uh, mouse joystick uh, floppy and hard disk punched cards optical mark reader etc so the main uh, fun function of an input unit is it accepts or reads the data and program it converts these instructions and data in computer acceptable form and it supplies the converted instructions and data to the computer system for further processing now what about output units we have various output units like monitor and video uh, video is called visual display unit printer plotter in short uh, the output units functions are it accepts the results produced by the computer which are in coded form and it converts these coded results to human acceptable form and it supplies the converted results to the outside world now we have few storage units or the memory units the function of storage unit is to store information the data and instructions are entered into the computer system through input units and they have to be stored inside the computer before the actual processing starts so sto storage units or the primary or the main memory of the computer provide support for these storage functions the main memory is a fast memory it stores programs along with data the main memory is directly accessed by the cpu we have a secondary memory also called auxiliary memory it's used to store information data and program instructions permanently so these may be used later on or deleted whenever not required the storage unit uh, performs the following main functions that is it stores data it holds the intermediate results of processing and it stores the final results of processing before they are passed on to the output unit now we all are aware of the brain of the computer it's called a cpu or central processing unit cpu has two units that is alu and cu alu means arithmetic logic unit and cu means control unit arithmetic logic unit's main function is to perform arithmetic and logic operations like addition subtraction multiplication division and or not exclusive or operations it also performs the increment decrement left shift and clear operations now cu or the control unit is the most important part of the cpu as it controls and coordinates the activities of all other units such as alu memory unit input and output unit so to sum up uh, it can get instructions out of the memory unit it can decode the instructions it sets up the routing through the internal wiring of data to the correct place at the correct time it can determine the storage location from where it is to get the next instruction after the previous instruction has been executed so coming in uh, coming to know about the various input devices as we uh, already went through uh, no those input devices like keyboard mouse joystick floppy or hard disk punched cards optical mark readers uh, etc let's study in detail uh, about each uh, input device so coming to uh, punched cards okay let us uh, again uh, divide these into base two basic categories that is analog device and digital device what is an analog device these are again input devices it's a continuous mechanism that represents information with continuous physical variations for example mercury thermometers record players they are all analog devices whereas one more is the digital device it's a, it's a dis discrete mechanism which represents all values with specific number system for example digital watches and computers are all process discrete information using binary number system now what are the examples of analog input devices joystick trackball mouse and paddle they are all are transducers what is a transducer it's a device that converts energy from one form to another 
Digital input devices. Some of the digital input devices are keyboard, light pen, digital cameras, digitizing video images, an acoustic tablet, a magnetic pen, and a tablet or digitizer. We have yet uh, graphical input techniques. These devices should uh, not be influenced purely by the way the user uses pens and pencils. The user should instead consider the following three factors. That is, uh, what is the you uh, how best we can. Uh, I mean, we, we must accept uh, what the user is trying to do, what inf input information an application program need, and how can the display and computer help the user. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are many graphical input techniques like use of selection points, defining a bounding rectangle, multiple keys for selection, modes, multiple selection, and menu selection. The most important fact while choosing an e-input device is that CPU should not get overloaded. Okay, So coming in uh, to coming to know punched cards in detail. So punched cards basically are I mean earlier years this uh, these cards were the most widely used input medium. Uh, earlier they used to work on punch cards there were two types of punch cards so one has 80 columns and the other had 96 columns the 80 column punch cards had uh, they used the uh, they were having rectangular holes and they used holerith code and one hole in punch position is equal to one bit while 96 column cards punch cards they used print area they had round holes and they used six bit code uh, punch cards are rarely used today except in large companies like public utilities. Now coming to card readers. What does a card reader do? It's an input device again. It transfers data from the punch card to the computer system. The card reader will read each punch card by passing light on it. Each card will be passed between a light source and a set of light detectors. So card readers can read up to 2000 cards per minute. We have uh, seen this diagram, it's very nicely um, represented how a card reader uh, is designed. There's a stacker, uh, these are punch cards, your hopper, blank cards, punching stations, reading station, and there's a stacker. So, uh, uh, keyboard. This again uh, shows the illustration of key punching and verification procedure. So, it starts like this source document key punch operator then key punch machine punch deck then uh, verifier machine the source document say verify operator then verify machine and then the verified deck so there are two types of card readers photoelectric card reader and wire brush card reader now coming to key punching machines this is another input device uh, used uh, to punch data on a punch card it's called the key punch it contains keyboard and looks like a typewriter keyboard and uh, these machines have the following components keyboard so commonly used key punch machines were IBM 026 and IBM 029 so the these machines have the following components the keyboard card hopper punching station card stacker column indicator backspace key program control unit program drum reading section switches printing mechanism etc now we all are aware of a very popular and widely used uh, input device uh, that is a keyboard. Keyboard contains, it looks similar to a typewriter. It contains alphabets, digits, special characters and some control keys. A general purpose keyboard normally contains cursor control keys and function keys. Function keys allows user to enter frequently used operations in a single key stroke and cursor control keys can be used to select displayed objects or coordinate positions by positioning the cursor on the screen. So this is how a keyboard looks. It has functional keys, numeric pad here, there is an arrow uh, key, upward, downward, right key, left key and you have alpha keys, alphabetical keys. Now. Special keys and their functions. Arrow keys is to move the cursor in the top, down, left and right directions in a document. Backspace key to delete the character on the left of the cursor. Caps lock to capitalize the letters. Del or delete keys uh, to uh, delete the character from the current position of the cursor. 
end enter is to move the cursor to end of the line to start a new paragraph in a document esc to cancel a command home is to move the cursor to the beginning of the line ins that is to insert the character and shift key is um, to type the special characters above the numeric keys if you press this key along with the number key the special characters above that number will be typed for example to type a uh, to type hash you have to press the shift key and the number key by key. space bar to enter a space tab to enter multiple spaces between two words in a document so this is a mouse the next input device which we are all familiar with it's a pointing device it's a small handheld box and is used to position the cursor on the screen the amount and direction of movement can be detected by the wheels or the rollers on the bottom of the mouse now um, a mouse can be picked up and down at any position on the screen without change in cursor movement it has uh, three clicks left click right click and double click the mouse can be used to drag and drop objects on the screen so joystick is yet another pointing device popularly used for games it's used to move the cursor position on the screen the screen cursor movement in any particular direction is measured by the distance that the sh stick is shifted or moved from its center position so it can also move right or left forward or backward coming to trackball this is a trackball a trackball is also a pointing device it consists of a ball which is fitted on a box the ball can be rotated with fingers or palm of the hand to move the cursor on the screen so trackballs are generally fitted on keyboards so these are the trackballs now coming to touch panels a touch panel is a very sophisticated and user friendly input device it allows the displayed objects or screen positions to be selected by the touch of a finger there are three methods by which an input into the touch panel can be recorded namely optical electrical or acoustic methods coming to light pen what is light pen it's another pointing device used to select screen positions by detecting the light coming from points on the crt screen or cathode ray tube screen it's a pen like device which is photosensitive when the tip of the pen touches the screen then the position of the crt screen is detected by the pen an activated light pen pointed at a stop a spot on the screen as the electron beam lights up that spot generates an electrical pulse that causes the coordinate position of electron beam to be recorded so light pen is uh, used to draw directly on the crt screen now another input device is the digitizer a digitizer is an input device which can also be called as a graphics tablet very uh, similar to a graph uh, paper here it contains series of parallel wires in the x and y directions um it, it has it consists uh, essentially of three interconnected parts the thin flat plate called platen or uh, the tablet which forms the work surface or active area a pointing device which can be moved about the platen and a controller which converts electrical signals arising from the interaction of the pointer and platen into location information related to its some origin now uh, from it ranges the sizes ranges from 11 inches to 16 inches the most popular pointing devices are either a stylus or a puck digitizing what is digitizing it's the process of identifying locating or selecting a menu item entity or point to an input device next is uh, digitizing digitizing is a process of identifying locating or selecting menu item entity or a point to an input device voice recognition voice recognition system uses a microphone or a telephone as an input device it converts person's speech pattern into digital signals by comparing the electrical patterns produced by the speaker's voice with a set of pre-recorded patterns stored in the computer now touch screen touch screen some computers have touch screen which is sensitive to users touch one can use finger to point the command displayed on the screen it's popular on laptops we have two types of uh, touch screens so we have uh, three types of uh, touch screens they are a capacitance screen infrared screens and pressure sensitive screens of mylar so capacitive screen uses uh, uh, the device which can ch sense changes in capacitance whenever we touch the the user touches the screen with a stylus or finger infrared screens have light emitting diodes and photo detector cells through which 
the user touches the screen, some light beams are interrupted and computer senses the position of the finger. Pressure sensitive screens of mylar are separated by small uh, spaces uh, and are used. Uh, each sheet of mylar contains ro rows of invisible wires. The sheet are placed in such a way that the wires run horizontally in one sheet and vertically in the other. When the user applies pressure on the screen, the wires at that point may contact and a circuit is closed. This is sensed, uh, this is sensed and fed to the computer. Now, uh, coming to yet another input or device that is the optical recognition. Optical recognition occurs when a device scans a printed surface and translates the image the scanner sees into a machine readable format that is understandable by the computer. There are three types of optical recognition devices. They are called OCR, OMR and OBR. OCR stands for optical character recognition, OMR for optical mark recognition and OBR for optical bar recognition. Now, coming to scanners, they are a kind of input device. Scanners are capable of entering information directly into the computer and is not required to key the information. We have optical scanners which use light source and light sensors to read information recorded on a paper and we have optical character reader or OCR. We have um, uh, and uh, another that is the OMR optical mark readers and we have optical barcode readers OBR and uh, we have magnetic ink character readers or MICR. We have yet uh, another uh, let us uh, just uh, understand what exactly uh, is the mechanism. Coming to scanners as I said they use light source and light sensors to read information recorded on paper. Here in OCR, it, used to, it is used to recognize alphanumeric characters printed or typewritten on paper. And um, American National Standard Institute has adopted a standard type font called OCRA for use with OCRs shown in, as shown in figure 12 here. See, you have A, B, C, D, e, F, G, H, T, L, Z and then followed by num numbers, numerical data and you have uh, other uh, symbols like full stop and you know comma apostrophe close bracket flower brackets percentage question mark etc so um, optical mark readers omrs they are used to check special examination answer sheets so questionnaires the answer sheets contain special marks such as a square or a bubble these bubbles can be filled with a soft pencil or ink these kind of marked answer sheets are used where one out of a few number of alternatives is to be selected and marked especially in exams and all so the change in the reflected light is used to detect the presence of a mark and uh, that's how OMR is optical mark sheets are uh, readers are done. Now coming to OBR the optical barcode readers uses a number of lines or bars varying thickness and spacing between them to represent the desired information. Uh, the universal product code uh, uses a series a UPC it see, uh, uses a series of vertical bars of varying widths. See, uh, this is a barcode. Uh, it has uh, very similar to the zebra stripes. Okay, and um, these bars are detected at ten digits, second five digits, uh, identify individual product, the first five digits, uh, uh, identify the supplier or manufacturer of the item, the second five digits identify the individual product. The code also contains a check digit to ensure that the information read is correct or not. So coming to MICR or magnetic ink character readers, it's an example of pattern recognition technique and has successfully replaced the time uh, consuming and expensive punched card processing. So human involvement is required to encode the check amount and other descriptions. Thus, some room for error does remain. Uh, shows the layer. So this is a figure which shows the layout of encoding on a personal check. So micro code, okay. Then what are terminals? These are much more, terminals are much more limited than the personal computers. Although they look like them, terminals have only a screen and a keyboard and the electronics that allow them to communicate with the computer to which they are connected and are used only to send information to the computer and receive information from it. Here we will discuss dumb terminal, uh, intelligent terminals and internet terminals. Internet terminals. So... A dumb terminal means um, it has, uh, it's also called VDT, the video display terminal. It has a display screen and a keyboard and can input and output but not process the data. While intelligent terminal, it has, uh, see, these are used in ATMs, 
uh, as an automated teller machine, POS terminals, and uh, used to record purchase at a store's checkout counter. Here, what it does is it has its own memory and processor. It also has a display screen and a keyboard. Now coming to internet terminal, this is uh, providing access to the internet. There are several variants which are given below, the set-top box, the network computer, the online game player, the full-blown PC or TV or TV PC. It merges the personal computer with TV set, then the wireless pocket or PC or personal digital assistant PDA. See, these look something very similar to, this is the monitor visual display unit and this is the terminal. So this is all about the input devices and uh, uh, have we left out anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't speak about the internet terminal. Set-top box or web terminal, it displays the web pages on a TV set while the network computer is a cheap striped down computer that connects people to networks. The online game player, it only lets you play games but also connects to the internet. The full-blown PC or TV, it merges a personal computer with a television set. The wireless pocket PC or personal digital assistant, DPD, is a handheld computer with a tiny keyboard that can do way, that can do two-way wireless messaging. So that's all with input devices. Coming to output devices. Hmm. An output device is a device which accepts results from the computer and displays them to the user. The output device also converts the binary code obtained from computer into human readable form. Uh, hard, there are two types of uh, uh, documents that is hard copy and soft copy. Hard copy is the output okay, uh, from by a, com uh, it's a computer output which is permanent in nature and can be kept in paper files. You can touch it also you, and it can be looked at a later stage when the person is not using. Soft copy is a temporary um, uh, PDF or uh, format document, document format which is shown on a terminal screen or spoken out by a voice response system mm -hmm. like speaker. The commonly used output devices are cathode ray tube screen that is CRT screen, mm -hmm. printers and plotters. So hard copy devices, these uh, gives us printed output, for example, printouts, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. whether text or graphics from printers, mm -hmm. film, including microfilm, microfish is also considered hard copy output. So hard copy output devices are printers. Print. Now, what are the print qualities? Okay, we have a considerable variety in the quality of hard copy. Some print qualities are given below. What are, can you just read this? What are the two types, three types of uh, quality? Near typeset quality, letter quality, near letter quality, standard quality, draft quality. Okay. So printer, a printer is an output device that prints characters, symbols and perhaps graphics on paper and other hard copy medium. The resolution or quality of the sharpness of the image is indicated by DPI. DPI means dots per inch, which is a measure of the dots. Okay, mm -hmm. so depending upon the speed, okay, of mm -hmm. printing, printers can be classified as character printers, line printers, and page printers. So there's yet yet another classification depending on the technology used for printing, whether or not the image produced is formed by physical contact of the print mechanism with paper. So according to this classification, printers are of two types. What are they? Impact printers, non-impact printers. So impact printers, they do have contact with paper while non-impact printers don't have contact with paper. Mm -hmm. So what are the character printers? Character printers print only one character at a time. Low speed printers are generally used for low volume printing. Okay. So this is the typical uh, representation of a daisy wheel printer. Mm -hmm. See there is ribbon here. We insert paper here. The hammer characters embossed on tip of the arm. So this is a daisy wheel printer. Okay, better quality printers are used when quality is needed. Okay, so mm. another variety is dot matrix printer. A dot matrix printer prints the characters as a pattern of dots. <laughs> mm. Inkjet printers produce high quality printing output. Output. The yeah, speed, the of, speed inkjet of inkjet printers lies in the range of 40 to 300 CPS. They also sort of fonts and styles. The, another type of printers are line printers, drum, drum printers, printers, and chain, uh, chain printers. printers. 
पेज प्रिंटर्स एंड सो ड्रम प्रिंटर्स चेन प्रिंटर्स एंड लाइन लाइन प्रिंटर्स ड्रम प्रिंटर्स सो लाइन प्रिंटर्स में एज एम सच इज लाइन प्रिंटर प्रिंट वन लाइन ऑफ दस्ट टेक्सट एट अ टाइम ओके एग्जाम्पल ड्रम प्रिंटर एंड चेन प्रिंटर आर द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज लाइन प्रिंटर्स वेन वी गो टू सो लाइन प्रिंटर्स में यू हैव टू टाइप्स ड्रम प्रिंटर एंड चेन प्रिंटर अ ड्रम प्रिंटर कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ सॉलिड सिलेंड्रिकल ड्रम सॉलिड सिलेंड्रिकल ड्रम विच कंटेन्स कंप्लीट रेज कैरेक्टर सेट इन ईच बैंड अराउंड द सिलेंडर सी इट लुक्स समथिंग लाइक दिस यू कैन सी दिस इज अ ड्रम प्रिंटर now chain printers are uh, mm-hmm. they use a rapidly rotating chain which is called print chain mm-hmm. okay so print chain mein you have see this is the typical uh, representation of a print chain on of a, on a chain printer now coming to page printers they are non impact printers they print one page at a time at a very high speed of 2000 lines per minute they are very costly and economical only when printed volume is very high mm-hmm. okay they can produce 300 pages per minute can you imagine 300 pages per minute now coming to laser printer the difference between dot matrix printer and the laser printer are given below so which is the printer which can uh, give up to 300 pages per minute mm-hmm. page printers ha huh, page printers okay it's so also called laser laser, laser beam is turned off and on under the control of a hmm. uh, computer computer so now the difference is between dot matrix printer and laser printer mm-hmm. are as follows in a dot matrix printer mm-hmm. prints mm-hmm. characters mm-hmm. using mm-hmm. dots dots while in laser printer prints mm-hmm. characters mm-hmm. completely completely here in dot matrix the mm-hmm. speed is measured in characters per second while in laser mm-hmm. printer the speed is measured in pages mm-hmm. in print it prints approximately 200 to 300 characters in one second dot matrix and uh, laser printer prints approximately 4 to 20 pages in one minute so uh, dot matrix is quite noisy while laser printer is not very noisy dot matrix is cheap while laser printer is expensive we have yet another category thermal printers then led printers plotters drum plotters okay flat mm-hmm. bed plotters mm-hmm. electrostatic plotters etc mm-hmm. now if i ask you what is a thermal printer mm-hmm. it is uh, you can say that Uh, these printers are a variation of the non-impact dot matrix type in which selected needles are pressed against the heat sensitive paper in a dot matrix method mm. for formation of characters mm. okay the advantage mm. of this type of printer over the dot matrix is that the thermal unit is much mm. quieter mm. these provide high quality color outputs also mm. they are expensive and slow also now led printer uh, uh, mm. um, the disadvantages they are expensive mm. and slow mm. led printers are So, uh, like LED means light emitting diode printer, okay, mm. or liquid crystal printers. They use LEDs which are cheaper alternatives mm. of laser mm. printers. Mm. Uh, here, LED mm. LEDs are used to produce image on the drum rather than on the laser mm. beam. Mm. So, for example, of this is Epson A- APL five thousand two hundred printer. Mm. Now, coming to plotters, what is a plotter? It's an output device used mm. to produce hard copies of graphs and designs. Mm. So, जब भी graphs and designs का mm. output चाहिए, hard copies चाहिए, it's called plotters. Mm. Uh, we use the output device called plotters. They use ink pen or ink jet mm. to draw mm. graphics and drawings. Mm. Now, uh, drum plotters. In case of drum plotter, there's a drum that moves back and forth to produce vertical motion. The paper on which the design has to be made is placed on this drum. Mm. A pen is mounted horizontally across the drum in a pen car, car carriage. Mm. Now, flat bed, flat bed, flat bed plotters. In case of a flat bed plotter, paper is spread mm. out and fixed over a rectangular flat bed table. Mm. Okay. Now, if we look at this, electrostatic plotters. Huh, see, this is a diagrammatic representation, okay, of flat bed printers, flat mm. bed plotters. Uh, multicolored graphs and designs can be produced by using pens with multicolored inks. Huh. So here you should remember, pen station holds pens ready mm. for use. Pen car carriage holds the pen used for plotting. 
white bar moves the pen carriage to left and right control panel has keys to control the operation of the plotter and lamps which indicate the status of the plotter now what are electrostatic plotters mm. they are uh, they use electrostatic charges to create images outside images out output uh, developed to allow the image to appear mm. now they can produce drawings up to 8 inch by 8 inch or sometimes even larger soft copy devices output hardware consists of devices that convert machine readable information at the as the result of processing into human readable form so computer say you get a human readable form from computer mm. readable form to human readable form uh, a soft copy or a document is given uh, that can be printable okay mm. the principal kinds of output are soft copy and hard copy mm. soft copies are seen on the monitor mm. or crt display screens while a flat panel display screen for example liquid disc crystal display soft copy is a data mm. it's that's shown on a monitor screen display mm. screen or is in audio form or voice form mm. so this kind of output is not tangible it cannot be touched actually you can all, you almost never hear the word soft copy used in real life while the see even the sound which comes out of uh, from this uh, or the soft copy is the sound which we hear from speakers uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. and uh, soft copy is that which we see on the screen mm -hmm. while hard copies are those printouts okay which are given out by output devices mm -hmm. as discussed earlier uh, so what are the monitors these are mm -hmm. display screens yes. crts mm -hmm. or cathode ray tubes screens or simply screens mm -hmm. they are output devices because they show the information mm -hmm. or give out the document mm -hmm. which is from machine understandable mm -hmm. to human understandable understandable document that show programming instructions and data as they are being input and information after it is processed now screen clarity dot pitch resolution and refresh rate what are these so the major factors affecting screen clarity are dot pitch resolution and refresh rate a pixel for picture element is the smallest unit on the screen that can be turned on or off or made different shapes so you must remember what a pixel is it's a picture element the mm. smallest unit on the screen that can be turned on and off or made different shapes now resolution means it's the image sharpness of on a of a display screen so how do you calculate image resolution uh, in terms of formula horizontal pixels into vertical pixels mm. so resolution is expressed resolution is equal to horizontal pixels into vertical pixels each uh, pixel can be assigned a color or a particular shade of gray now coming to what is the refresh rate so number of times per second that the pixels are recharged so that their glow remains bright what are the types of monitors what are the types of monitors the two types of monitors are crt and flat panel cathode ray tube type is a vacuum tube used as a display screen in a computer or video display terminal so this is the crt display the same kind of technology is found not only in screens of desktop but also in television sets and flight information monitors in airports so crt displays comes in two varieties monochrome and color multicolor monochrome displays one in green blue orange yellow pink uh, amber red and white depending on the type of phosphor material used this is an operation of three electron gun crt flat panel displays compared to crts the flat panel displays are much thinner weigh less and consume less power see this is a typical mm. flat panel display now advantages uh, they have lower power consumption cover less space than conventional monitors reduction in cooling load high performance monitors flexibility of usage more viewing um, area uh, the types of flat panel displays are active matrix versus passive matrix flat panel displays in an active matrix display also known as tft or thin film transistor display each pixel on the screen is controlled by its own transistor while in a passive matrix display a transistor controls a whole row of or column of pixels now uh, what is a ghost 
ghost means the uh, advantage is that the passive matrix displays are less expensive and use less power than active matrix but they aren't as clear and bright and can leave ghosts mm -hmm. so these are the display changes which happens quickly passive matrix displays go by the abbreviations hpa stn or dstn now video standards pcs have graphics cards also known as video cards or video adapters that convert signals from the computer into video signals that can be displayed as images on a monitor ram vram ram or vram video cards have their own memory video ram or video, v video ram which stores the information about each pixel then uh, you have the common color and resolution standards for monitors are vga svga xga sxga and uxga the vga means video graphics array SVGA means Super Video Graphics Array. It supports a resolution up to 800 by 600 pixels, whereas uh, this one, no, uh, VGA, up to 720 to 70 720 by 400 pixels, while SVGA 800 by 600 pixels. XGA, Extended Graphics Array, has a resolution of up to 1024 by 768 pixels. And SXGA, Super Extended Graphics Array, has a resolution of 1280 by 1024 pixels and often used with 19-inch and 21-inch monitors. UXGA is Ultra Extended Graphics Array. It has a resolution of 1600 by 1200 pixels. It is expected to become more popular with graphics artists. Uh, so, other using 21-inch monitors. So, the, about coming to... Uh, Memories of primary and secondary, a computer is capable of storing bulk of data and retrieving or accessing the stored data. So these uh, cheaper memory devices, see, you have primary devices and secondary devices. The secondary device storage devices are cheaper uh, memory devices called secondary storage devices. They can store bulk of data at a very less cost. Now, uh, the commonly used secondary storage devices are magnetic tape, floppy disk, hard disk and CD-ROM. So, look at this Shavanti. This is the memory, this is the primary or internal storage, this is the secondary or external storage. Primary storage may you have RAM and ROM. Secondary external storage may magnetic tape, floppy disk, hard disk and CD-ROM. So, the choice of a particular secondary storage device for a given application mainly depends on how the stored information needs to be accessed. Basically, there are two methods of accessing information, sequential or serial access, direct or random access. Now, coming to the primary memories. The random access memory, read on, uh, the, you have under random access memory, it's also known as primary storage uh, and it temporarily stores software instructions and data before or after it is processed by the CPU. The four types of RAM chips are used in PCs which are given below are DRAM, SDRAM and SRAM, RDRAM. So DRAM is uh, dynamic RAM, SDRAM is hard disks are magnetic disk which are uh, most popular direct access storage medium. The disk is coated on both sides with magnetic material called iron oxide. A term cylinder is usually used in the case of a disk, spa disk pack. Hard disks are quite sensitive devices. The read or write head does not actually touch the disc, but rather rides on a cushion of air about 0.001 inch thick. Now, a head crash happens when the surface of the read or write head or particles on the surface come into contact with the surface of the hard disk platter, causing the loss of some or the, uh, all of the data on the disc. Now, each track is divided into number of fixed length physical blocks called sectors. These sectors are separated by inter-record gaps. Different types of disks have different number of tracks and sectors. All the read or write heads are positioned on the tracks on surfaces in the same plane. The same number of the tracks on each of the surfaces together are said to form a cylinder. So this is the diagrammatic representation of a disk drive having a fixed head and a movable head disk. You can see this. Hmm. This is having fixed head uh -huh. and this is a movable head, hmm. head disk. And uh, this is a diagrammatic representation of a microcomputer hard drive. So, capacity is measured in tens of gigabytes up to 40 gigabytes. Hmm. If you look at this, 
many times faster computer adds frequently specify speeds and revolutions per minute a floppy disk drive rotates at only 360 rotations per minute a 7200 rpm hard drive is going about 300 miles per hour so what are access time seek time latency time data transfer time you must know access time is the access time of a record on a disk consists of three factors that is seek time latency time and data transfer transfer time now seek time it refers to the time taken to position the read or write head at the desired track on the disk latency time refers to the time taken to position the read or write head of at the desired sector of the track latency time depends on the speed of the rotation of the disk data transfer time is the actual time required to transfer the data the data transfer time depends upon the density of stored data and rotational speed of the disk uh, hard disks are known as fixed disks the computer uh, floppy disk takes more time to read from a flop uh, we, t- we get more we take more time to read from floppy disk while computer takes very less time to read from hard disk floppy disks are more prone to damage while less prone to damage in hard disk uh, floppy disk are 1.44 mb of data while hard disk can be used to store for more data than floppy floppy disk they can be used to store data in the range of few gbs floppy disks are cheap while hard disks are costly for magnetic disk numerical uh, problems the formula used is storage capacity of one surface is equal to number of tracks into number of sectors into bytes per sector compact disk or optical disk they are familiar with optical disk uh, it's a removable disk usually 4.75 inches in diameter and less than 120 with 128 of an inch thick uh optical disks come in various types cd rom cd r cd r w dvd rom cd cd r compact disk recordable cd r w compact disk rewritable cd dvd rom digital versatile disk or digital video disk with read only memory dvd r dvd r w dvd ram dvd plus r w difference between a hard disk and cd rom is Hard disks are also known as fixed disks. CD-ROMs are also known as optical disks. Data is stored in the form of concentric circles in hard disk. Data is stored in the form of a single spiral track in CD-ROM. The computer takes less time to read from hard disk. It is in the range of 10 to 30 milliseconds. The computer takes more time to read from CD-ROM. It's in the range of 100 to 300 milliseconds. Data can be read or written as and when required. This can be reused in hard disk. while in cd rom it's a permanent storage medium data only once recorded cannot be erased and hence the cd roms cannot be reused now hard disks are not portable cd roms are portable hard disks require a less complicated drive mechanism cd roms require a more complicated drive mechanism hard disks have a very large storage capacity it ha- where cd roms have storage capacity of about 650 megabytes um hard hard disks are costly while cd roms are cheap and hard disks are better storage medium for data archiving as compared to cd rom cd roms have a data storage life in excess of 30 years these are a better storage medium for data archiving as compared to hard disks what is magnetic magnetic tape it's a secondary storage device which can hold large volumes of data on it uh, we have track 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 this is the structure of a nine track tape uh, so in a magnetic tape we need to know what is irg or inter record gap that is the empty portion of tape which occurs between every two records and inter uh, block gaps are generated between blocks of data and they occur less frequently than inter record gap and uh, the beginning point of uh, the ma- magnetic tape is the load point and the end part is called of end of reel markers then uh, the first record after load point is known as a header control label and uh, several sequential files may be stored in the tape so this is a graphic uh, diagrammatic representation of magnetic tape markers and labels so the actual rate uh, at which the data is transferred between tape and the cpu depends on the tape drive speed and density of recording this is a multiple record block and we need to know about a few formulae here for magnetic tape numericals length of a block is block size by tape density then a maximum number of blocks on a tape will be tape length by block length plus inter block gap and uh, effective transfer rate will be 
tape density uh, transfer rate will be tape density into tape speed and effective transfer rate will be transfer rate into length of a block by length of a block with ipg and um, there are a few examples solved here concepts of virtual and cache memory cache memory uh, stores instructions and data that processor is likely to use frequently thus cache speeds up processing it uses special chips often static random access memory chips uh, sometimes four times uh, because as four times as fast as regular memory however the chips cost six times as much uh, so this uh, that keeps them from being used for the entire system's memory uh, here what is a hit and a miss uh, if the address matches the address stored in the cache matches it's called a hit and if it doesn't match then we say a miss has occurred then uh, we need to know about the level 2 cache and level 1 cache. Level 1 cache is also called primary cache and level 2 cache is called secondary cache. And uh, one more important thing we must know is here, uh, in addition, most com current computer operating systems allow for the use of virtual memory, that is some free hard disk space used to extend the capacity of RAM. Overall cost of the system because it's cheaper, to store data on a hard disk drive then it's uh, then it's to add additional me memory chips to the computer units of memory bit binary digit byte binary digit 0 and 1 byte is to represent letters numbers or special characters such as question mark or star bits are combined into groups the 8 uh, bits is a byte kilobyte is this precisely 1000 bytes uh, 1 kilobyte is about 1000 bytes, 1 megabyte is about 1 million bytes, 1 gigabyte is about 1 billion bytes and 1 terabyte is about 1 trillion bytes. So summary is a computer is a fast electronic device that processes input data and provides information as output. Computer is more accurate, faster, diligent and has much more memory than human beings. The input or output device are also known as peripheral devices because they surround the CPU. And uh, keyboard and mouse are the main input devices of computer. Monitor and printer are the main output devices of computer. Printers are broadly classified into impact and non-impact printers. Memory is an integral and an important component of a digital computer. RAM, random access memory, ROM, read-only memory. Floppy disk, often called a diskette or simply a disk in removal flat piece of mylar plastic bag package, you know, 3.5 inch plastic case. A hard disk can be inserted or removed from the hard disk drive. An optical disk is a removable disk, usually 4.75 inches in diameter and less than 1 20th of an inch thick on which data is written and read through the use of laser beams. Magnetic tape is a secondary storage device which can hold large volume of data on it. It's a sequential access media. Cache temporarily stores instructions and data so that the process is likely to use frequently. Thus, cache speeds up processing. Here, the important questions are why are input or output devices necessary for a computer system? What is an input device? Name some of the commonly used input devices. Write short notes on the following printers, video standards and LED. What is the difference between impact and non-impact printers? What are the differences between a hard disk and a CD-ROM? Briefly explain the features of a hard disk with a neat diagram. Write a short note on magnetic tape. So with this we complete section B of computer fundamentals. Thank you.